Right, so winter is uh, setting in and uh, going down the field to play with big antennas is uh, becoming a less attractive proposition as it gets colder and wetter. So I've been looking to see what I can do uh, from my home QTH. Now I've got two problems at this address. The first is um, space. I live in a mid-terrace house fairly sort of average size, possibly marginally bigger than an average size garden, but still not huge. And the second problem is there is a huge amount of electrical noise and interference here. So I've been looking at what I can do to combat that. Now, I've already got a mount in the ground for a vertical antenna, so I wondered if I can um, revive my 40 meter vertical. Um, unfortunately, the radial system for that is knackered, so I'd have to uh, rebuild the radial system. Now, last time I did that, I put in, uh, I think it was about uh, 60 odd radials, because as you'll know from my previous video, and um, Callum DX Command has done lots of videos on this, so I'm not going to uh, reinvent the wheel, but uh, if you, sh you can shorten the length of your radial, but you need to increase the number. Now the distance from the mast to the uh, path that runs through the garden is just over one meter. So I ended up making those radials really short. And like I say, I, I ended up with something stupid like 60 odd radials, which I'm not laying that down again. So the problem with the vertical is you need space for the radials. Now, I came across this article. This is uh, Radcom, a uh, magazine we get in the UK. Um, you're a member of the RSGB which for the American viewers is basically uh, our equivalent of your ARRL uh, you pay your fee and uh, once a month they send you a uh, copy of this uh, magazine now this is in the if anyone wants to have a look this is in the uh, October 2020 edition pages 44-45 um, it's by a guy called uh, Chris Moulding uh, he runs a company called Cross Country Wireless and um, he's tried connecting up uh, loops on the ground as a counterpoise for uh, vertical, well he did it with a G7FEK but it should basically work with any vertical. So uh, I'll show you, um, let's get the other camera in and I'll show you an up close of the um, article. now. You need a special transformer um, slash isolator for this. He gives you the uh, diagram there and he does sell them on the uh, website as well. Um, there's the uh, so there's the author um, crosscountrywireless.net is the website and uh, like I say I bought one of the transformers. So you've got your uh, coax connector that's for the uh, vertical element on the antenna. On the top here that's for the uh, ground to the earth rod for lightning protection and uh, discharge static and this connection here connects to your uh, loops on the ground. So here's the uh, diagram of it. So he's done this with um, 20 meter radius loops which is what they recommend for a loop on the ground. So he's put two loops in here, so a total of 40 metres of wire. And apparently that worked. He talked about adding a um, third loop in. But, uh, so I'll show you this diagram here. Nothing flashy here, no uh, flash gimmicks with computers or anything like that. We're uh, old school here. So if you imagine up here I have my conservatory and... Uh, down this end I have my uh, caravan, the bottom of the garden, so this is south and north, so my back garden is south facing. Just off the side of the paper here I have a uh, pathway um, that runs from the uh, house to the bottom of the garden, so I can't really route those cables for the loops underneath the pathway. So this is my mast here, that black dot there, and um, so what I've done is I've actually put four loops on. So there's one loop there, goes out to the path, runs along the path, back, under, this is underneath the caravan, and 
back up there and that connects as one loop. Next loop up here comes out to the path, up to the conservatory, across about a metre. And uh, back there, got another loop in this corner and another bigger loop here. So as you can see, these loops are one metre across, that's uh, one metre from the in line with the mast to the pavement and two metres from in line with the mast to the fence and then uh, the mast is about two metres away from the uh, conservatory. So adding all these, uh, adding the length of all of these wires together I reckon I've got a loop that's 8 metres, one that's 12, one that's 6 and one that's 10 metres. So I've got a total of 36 metres of wire uh, down there as um, basically acting as a radial or counterpoise, call it what you will. Um, my gut feeling is that isn't enough, but I'll be fair, this guy, Chris Moulding, he, like I say, he runs a business, he's, he designs and sells antennas, so he knows a lot more about it than I do. So... Uh, He's got, with his two loops, he's got about 40 metres of wire down. And like I said, I've got 36, slightly less, uh, although I've got more loops. So, will it work? I don't, my initial gut feeling was it probably wouldn't. But like I say, this guy knows a lot more than me. So, I think the way to find out is uh, put the wire down and uh, hook it all up and give it a go. I don't know how well this comes across on camera. I'm using quite a wide angle lens, which probably makes this place look a bit bigger than it is. But what I've got is I've got a 48 millimeter scaffold pole concreted in the ground here. So I can mount my 12 meter tall spider wing mast on top of that. So that's a fairly secure anchor. And then uh, we've got a pathway down here. So that's kind of our boundary really. So from this pole to the pathway is one meter or just over from the pole to the fence is uh, two metres, pole to the conservatory over there, two metres, and we've got the caravan there. We can go underneath the caravan, um, takes us up to about four metres. So I'll give you a view from another angle. So we've got the, um, hang on, get the right mode. So we've got the caravan there. So the, uh, there's the pole. The radials go out underneath the caravan, across, along the path, and then uh, back into the pole again. And then uh, that's one loop. The other one goes back out, around there, along the path, down to the conservatory by that little trailer uh, sweep thing, and comes back in to the pole. And then... Uh, the next one goes back out again towards the uh, trailer sweep, out along the fence line to around the middle and back into the pole. And the final one goes out along the fence line underneath the caravan and back in if the camera will focus. Now what I've actually done is I've used a uh, spade and um, dug a slit into the ground and just gently Pried the ground apart just uh, below the uh, uh, grass level and dropped the cable uh, or dropped the wires in. And uh, I only did that about a week ago and you can't even see it now. Or you might just be able to see along this one, you can see where the slit was, but it's, it's all growing over quite nicely. So you can't really see it. And uh, in terms of uh, the base of the mast here, Obviously got my earth rod there and all the, here's where all the wires come out of the ground. I've got uh, four um, loops, so eight wires in total and uh, all come to this uh, automotive connector, soldered and uh, just taped it up so that it's, uh, it keeps the moisture out as best as we can. So. That's all we got, all fitted into, uh, like I say, area about one meter, two meters, two meters, and about four meters in that direction. So not a huge area. Um, my first inkling would be uh, 
it's, you haven't got much wire in the ground, so I don't know how well this is going to work, but I'll get the mast set up and uh, we'll give it a go, put it on air and see what happens, I guess. Okay, so here's an up close view. Now I've got it set up then. So I've got my uh, antenna wire there, which is a quarter wave on 40 meters, goes all the way up my mast. This is a um, 12 meter spider beam mast. Uh, got earth connection on there, goes to my uh, ground rod. That's really only for um, lightning protection and uh, static discharge. And then uh, on the bottom here, if you can see it, I've got my uh, wires from my loop that go into there so that's uh, I've called it ground really that's uh, counterpoise or radials and then uh, feeder cable is uh, buried under the ground goes over to that box also earthed to ground over there and then it goes uh, off up into the uh, shack which is uh, up there in that window up there so conclusion then I'm going to the uh, premise of this article where it says loop counterpoises for low noise verticals or low noise vertical HF antennas um, did it work well I've had this antenna on air for uh, about an hour I've been messing about on FT8 and uh, signal reports coming back are absolutely great so I kind of need to eat humble pie here really because uh, I originally said I didn't think this was going to work and the reason for that is you need um, for a quarter wave vertical you need a decent uh, ground or counterpoise system and uh, I thought that um, the amount of wire I put down wasn't enough for a 40 meter quarter wave and well the results speak for themselves. I'm looking at the log there and uh, I made around 20 contacts in uh, about 45 minutes, less than an hour I made 20 contacts. I've done a whisper test and uh, you know it's working all over Europe. Now there's no DX but it's middle of the day, it's the wrong time of day for uh, DX on 40 meters so it'd be interesting to redo this at, you know at night once it gets dark um, and I'll probably throw a a whisper chart on at the end of this video just to uh, compare once it gets dark so I have to say this works a lot better than expected um, in fact it's probably one of the better antennas I've had here um, I did try it before I put the cross-country wireless um, isolator on there the ballon I did try it with a normal one-to-one -one ballon and um, check the S level. I didn't actually make any contacts but just check the noise level and uh, after I put the uh, cross-country wireless um, isolator ballon in there um, the noise level was marginally quieter probably about half an S point maybe one S point. Now I will be fair and say I've got a couple of other noise issues here as well with the uh, I think there's a bit of mains noise getting in. I think I need to uh, put some filters on the mains and uh, my uh, grounding in the station isn't as good as I'd like it to be. So, But even so, one S point down in noise is one S point further into the noise you can work other stations. So uh, for me, it worked and I basically managed to fit a full size vertical a uh, quarterway vertical for 40 meters in an area uh, three meters by six meters and like I say it reduced my noise level slightly so if you're in a difficult situation you know without much space I can I can thoroughly recommend this and uh, even if you've got a lot of noise you can always get something like a mag loop and uh, you know run a separate receive antenna and uh, bring that noise down and uh, my experience of mag loops is they are a little bit quieter and that's something else I want to test. Thank you for watching. If you like what I do, please click the thumbs up button. It lets me know that I'm heading in the right direction with the channel and gives me the confidence to keep doing what I'm doing. Don't forget to click the subscribe and also the bell button to be notified when I upload new content. 
If you don't like what I'm doing, feel free to click the thumbs down button. Just tell me why in the comments below. I welcome your feedback and constructive criticism will help me to improve the channel. Take care and I hope you will catch me in the next video.